We're here on Hollywood Boulevard today. You got a bunch of tourists. That's Jimmy Kimmel's studio that way. The Chinese theater's over there. It's cool, but it's kind of a mess. The Preem studio is better. Let me show you. That was a pretty good sprint, wasn't it? No, I'm kidding, they, they sped up the, the video footage there. The, uh, one of my life missions is to show that a bike is the best way to see the world. So I'm gonna show you a spot that the tourists don't know about. Um, wait a minute, didn't we have theme music ready for this week? Hang on, do that while I, while I do the, the cyclocross section over here. So we got the music, the graphics are coming soon. Uh, somebody else is in charge of that. When it comes to colors, I, I'm horrible at it. That's why I mostly just dress in cookies. So we'll get all the doodads, and it's not Kimmel's studio, but it's better in a way. For the whole Prem network, nature is our studio. So that was Nichols Canyon that I just climbed. One of the fun little spots that you could sneak away from the city. Common to see deer there. Up here at the end of this dead end road, we're at the Lancashire Monument which is, Lancashire was a real estate developer who donated the land to be a Boy Scout camp, and then it just turned into something else. And now it's only accessible between people's houses and this little sneaky staircase. A friend told me about this spot, and I've never seen anyone else up here, so I thought this would be a good place for the Preem show. I've been here on my channel, but Preem has better cameras, so I'll show you the view. You've got, uh, that's the San Fernando Valley back there, Burbank and all that stuff. Uh, Universal Studios is right here. Between those palm trees, you can see Hogwarts uh, the, for, at Universal. Um, over there, that's Quentin Tarantino's house. I know that because all the little Hollywood tour buses stop there and say that's Quentin Tarantino's house. Also, I saw him getting his paper one time. Mount Wilson's over there, and then you got Mount Baldy. The Lingersham Monument also mentions the, uh, the Battle of Cahuenga Pass which was uh, between Mexico and the settlers in the 1800s, uh, laid the groundwork for Californian statehood and the whole westward expansion thing. In modern times, Nichols Canyon is known to cyclists for the legendary group ride hosted by the LaGrange Cycling Club. Uh, LaGrange is one of the biggest clubs in North America. It was one of the USA Cycling Clubs of the Year in 2020. The, uh, the group ride has its own jersey and it rips up Nichols Canyon and then all the way down Mulholland to the Skirball Center. Um, so it's not exactly a battle, but there is some blood. There's a turn called Crash Corner on Nichols Canyon where the folks who live in the house there insist on watering their grass on Saturday nights. So the street gets real slippery. I have crashed there. But not bad for, you know, battle is a little bit much. But today we're just gonna hang out on Nichols Canyon for this show. The, uh, we are gonna make a couple little tweaks to the weekly preem show. Uh, the, the much debated meme segment is we're just gonna give that its own video once a month uh, so you can see Thrill House there. You know, for the folks who don't like it, don't click on it. And the folks who do like it, we, we still got that for you. We're not gonna leave you hanging. Uh, as I say, the ends justify the memes. Sorry, I've been waiting to make that pun for a long time. We're also gonna give the coaching segment his own video. Uh, that'll be once a week. So that way, you know, you're not getting your training on a Wednesday. You get on a Sunday, you can plan your week around it. That's gonna be a little easier for everybody to follow. All right, so that's our housekeeping. Now on to the show. In the news, City Bike continued their expansion in New York. Uh, they're now covering all of Manhattan as well as the other boroughs. It makes it the largest bike share program in the world outside of Asia, uh, Taipei, and then a handful of cities in China actually have it beat now. LA is pretty far behind on that. Uh, perfect weather year round. And the city part, there's hills, but the city part is pretty flat. Be perfect for, for bike riding. 
But just like bike lanes, there's bike share programs that they're kind of scattered and they don't cover the whole city, which makes it not that useful. So one of the little upsides of COVID is the bike boom that we mentioned last week. Now, cycling in New York City is up 30% from two years ago. That's a great example of what we call induced demand, which basically means if you build it, they will come. If you build it, he will come. That applies to highways, where if you add a lane, more cars will come. It also applies to bike shares and bike lanes, where if you provide them, you'll see more people on bikes, and it is working. There's been lots of infrastructure talk in the news lately. For more, let's go to our DC correspondent, Adam Pulford. Adam, what do you have for us? I'm a little too busy to report right now. This is, it's too, it's too good. I'll report back next week. Oh, cool. All right, Adam, thanks. Our ride of the week from the Prem Strava Club is Jonathan Green over in Katona, New York. Uh, looks like a nice ride, beach day, just under 60 miles, about three hours. Some nice photos, perfect weather. Obviously had a great time, that's what we're looking for. Next for our Prem TV photo of the week, uh, we've got our first tie because there's two awesome sunset photos. Uh, the first one is from Nicholas Duhot over in Canberra, Australia. Uh, that's a real pretty artsy photo of the silhouette, that's good stuff. Uh, and the second one is from Payuma, right in our backyard, by our friend Dan Beam. Uh, he did the fancy Instagram panorama scroll thing. That's some quality Instagramming right there. Uh, two great sunsets. Nice job, Prem TV photo winners. For our guest interview today, uh, Lex is going to speak to Brent Barber, the founder of the Bicycle Film Festival, which is celebrating its 20th year and coming to Los Angeles virtually. The Bicycle Film Festival was founded in New York and has been celebrating bicycles through art, film, and music for the last 20 years. Okay, let's talk to Brent. Hi everyone, this is Lex Albrecht with Cream TV, and this week I have the opportunity to speak with Brent Barber, who's the founding director of the Bicycle Film Festival, or BFF for short. <laughs> and I think that this is super, super exciting. Brent, how are you? Hi, I'm happy to be on Preem. This is awesome. Thank you for having me. But I think that you're not new at making like good things come out of a bad situation because I've heard that you got hit by a bus before in your life. Is that true? Yeah, I was doored in New York City into while riding my bike into an oncoming bus. Yeah, so wasn't as bad as it sounds, but it was bad. And I had about six months of rehabilitation to think about life and things and and is it true that the Bicycle Film Festival was actually kind of like born out of this unfortunate event? Yeah, when during like that's when I had time to think and I thought I want to do something positive. I mean, this is 20 years ago and still we have a lot of work to do, particularly in the North America, um, to promote cycling and make it more, I guess, normal. But, um, you know, at that time, the way people acted when I told them that I was in a, a crash uh, victim blaming, were you wearing a helmet? Oh, you weren't wearing a helmet. That's your fault. Or what are you doing riding on the street? I had been in two other types of crashes. I've been in a car crash and I'd been in a surfing accident in Hawaii where my face was all scratched up and people asked me what happened. And when I told them I was surfing, they, they were really like excited for me and sympathetic. And, you know, they're like, Oh, you're surf and all excited. And, and in the car crash, I was in a car crash in San Francisco Bay on the Bay Bridge in San Francisco, where my head went through a windshield. Sorry, if that's too much on this program. And I had amnesia, and but it wasn't as bad as the bus crash. But people like sent me gifts. Um, people were really friendly about it. Like I'm so sorry. But with the 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 bicycle crash, that was, you know, the police weren't very professional. And, you know, the, the, the EMTs in the hospital were amazing and all the other people I worked with throughout the rehabilitation. But, uh, yeah, so I, I, I was annoyed and I thought, why are people this way about bikes? And I said, well, it's, it's because people don't, there's not a lot of stories being told. People don't know how awesome it is, <laughs> you know? So I thought, well, I'm not a politician. I'm not doing this. I love films. I, I'm from an art background. Let's, sh let's show people movies. And I plan on doing it just one year. And uh, our first year we had sold out shows and we had national press. And I thought, wow, people are into this. I mean, we had a lot of great people involved and the, the energy was like, it was like going to a concert. 
people like when I came up to give the speech and they didn't know me because that was the first year I did the festival. Some people did know me or but people were cheering, you know, like welcome to bicycle film festival. Like, and people started screaming. I mean, it was the first year, <laughs> you don't even know what you're going to get yet. Cheer after the movies, <laughs> you know, it's like, so yeah, there was like, this just good, good feeling about it that we still like to think carry on. I mean, it, you know, doing something for 20 years, you have, it's a roller coaster ride, but it's been a really great ride. Where do you find the films to show at the film festival, especially 20 years ago? I mean, the only cycling film I really knew was like Breaking Away. Breaking Away is awesome. And um, we did the 30th or 35th anniversary of Breaking Away. That was pretty awesome. Uh, we had Dennis Christopher came out, the, you know, the main Italian guy, <laughs> the main character. There's some great like in film history, there's Bicycle Thieves, there's Breaking Away, there's Triplets of Belleville, and people are probably right now saying, and this one, and that one, and this one. And um, there's some great films that are with bikes. But with the Bicycle Film Festival, we express the culture in the different forms. You know, there's there's new films being made all the time. And you're, you're correct to think that that first year, it was tough. So we had to hit the... Also, technology has changed. At that time, you couldn't just say to somebody, hey, make a bike movie. It was, very, it was a lot more expensive. People were determining, like, so there's a lot of filmmakers at that time, I'll never make a film on video, <laughs> you know, digitally. Things evolved around that conversation. I said to people, hey, make a bike movie. You know, it took us like a year to produce the festival. Make a bike movie. And people said, well, I'm not going to make a movie, but I also paint. So we started an art exhibition. The man who helped me start the Bicycle Film Festival, or the, he owns this place called Anthology Film Archives, which is a, a temple of avant-garde and experimental and independent film. Jonas has passed now, but he was in his 70s when he helped me start the festival. And his spirit taught me to be inclusive, to find a way to let the Bicycle Film Festival be a place for um, everybody. Of course, we curate. We can't accept every film that it comes across our desk, so to speak. So we do, as we've evolved over the years, that first year we're just mining what is out there. And the first year we played, I consider one of the greatest. If you're into road cycling and into the sport of cycling, I consider A Sunday in Hell, like one of the greatest sports films, not just cycling, sports films ever made. And Jorgen left. I have the DVD. Yeah, awesome. I, I, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Sunday in Hell was a super big hit at the festival that first year, and we sold out. I couldn't believe it. We, like I said, we sold out shows. But then people, things started changing. We get a lot of submissions from around all around the world, and different subject matters: uh, fixed gear, BMX, road cycling, of course, mountain biking, things that aren't thematic. It just happens to, to be that there's the bike is there. You know, these people may many of the people who are making the films, famous or not bicycle means something to them, but some not. Yeah. And that's really awesome as well. Um, so we have like any other film festival, we have um, a film freeway um, program. Like it's like where you can submit your films. And um, so we encourage people to do that. And we receive hundreds of films every year. How many get selected? Uh, I would say 40 or so. Um, okay. So 40 to 50 and that 10 would be some films don't play everywhere in the world, but we will localize it. Or like say there's two films made about bike polo and they're both the same quality. We'll play the, the bike polo one from the United States in the United States and the other one that in Europe in Europe, you know, or something like that. How can I watch this one? Do I need to attend like a certain um, uh, venue at the Virtual Bicycle Film Festival or is it available all the time? You can go to the Bicycle Film Festival website, bicyclefilmfestival.com. Click on the tickets page, or you can see the map and click on one of the cities that you want to see. And then you okay. just buy tickets from there. Hey, thanks for doing this. Like, this is the film festival I know is going to just bring so much extra joy into people's lives, which is really needed at this time in our lives with all the stuff that's going on. No, thank you guys. I'm, I'm rooting for Preem. This is pretty awesome. Like, I'm excited and honored to be on this program with the other guests that you've had. Well, we're honored to have you too. I, hey, we're in this. We're in the same boat too, right? Celebrating riding and uh, having fun together with other cyclists. So yeah, it's like a natural fit. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Well, thank you, Brent. Thank you. All right, thanks, Brent. And thanks, Lex. And thank you for watching. Uh, I'm gonna go ride into the city and find a cookie. Till next week, have a good ride. See ya.
Our Euro clip from Cole Collective this week features the Gavia. If you don't remember it from the Giro d'Italia, Andy Hampton certainly does. Don't miss our other great content this week. Learn about the IT band from Dr. Ryan Green. Enjoy a ride in Japan with our host Seb. Coming up soon, we have some great content from Europe and the US alike. Make sure you subscribe and share so we can keep bringing it. See you next time.